Hey folks, welcome back. In the last two videos, we talked about Kick Ninja and Kick 3, two kick synthesizers or resynthesizers, where you can just drop in a sample or kick sample, and then it analyzes these kick samples for the pitch drop or for the pitch envelope and recreates or resynthesizes these, these kick drums. And in this video, I'll try to figure out some ways how to do that inside of Bitwig Studio just with native devices. So here I'm gonna just take one drum loop. Something like this. And here are kick drums in there, right? But these kick drums are pretty hard, in my opinion, to recreate because they're short and noisy. So let's single out your one kick drum inside of the sampler, disable key tracking, and also remove here the velocity. So this sounds like this. You can also hear there's some kind of um, yeah hi-hat on top. So it's pretty noisy. So the first thing we can do in Bitwig uh, to clean the signal or to separate the top and the lower end is of course we can just use a filter or an FX2 here, an FX3 for instance. Let's use FX2 first. Um, just solo here the low end. Let's use your scope. Uh, what's the name? O scope. Mm. Yeah. So this is how it looks like here. Um, but obviously, we use here some bandpass filters to separate a signal. Um, so we can also try and use, instead of the FX2, we can use a harmonic split device, which is spectral based or FFT based. And it tries to split the signals into multiple sine bins. Um, so here we can say we want to track a signal here on the low end. Let me see how this looks like. And then we pull this down here, and now we have the fundamental in this box here. We can disable the harmonics and also the noise uh, on top. We are left with the pure sine signal in the low end. Probably have to... No! I'm completely lost. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, you can see here, it's basically just a sine uh, wave, but with a lot of free ringing, right? Um, that's because of the FFT uh, process or the separation, and you can't prevent that. Maybe with the bigger window size, but you can't change this here in Bitwig. Um, but with this, we can more or less easily track the pitch um, so we can just use this harmonic split device here and let's say um, we go into an fx grid right so we single out here just the low end then we go into an fx grid and in here we can just take this and analyze it for the pitch drop let's use an oscilloscope too um, let's see how this sounds. You can see we, we get here some information. Which is the pitch information. And then we use the sine oscillator probably here. And we use the signal as a pitch input here. And we want to change the volume, of course, of this. But instead of using an envelope, use a multiply and a follower. So we follow here the volume shape of the input signal and then use this for the multiply to change the volume over time. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, let's put this in here, maybe, so we can... So we can mix this in. So now we have fully recreated kind of the low end here with a sine oscillator using the pitch information from the sample, uh, but only the low end and the follower for the volume shape. And this kind of works fairly well, in my opinion. Let's use another drum loop here. Let's use this one. And in oscope, it looks like this. Right, it's just, um, yeah, a sign with the pitch envelope on it. So this is how you can recreate it. And again here, um, a problem or a big problem that I always have with the grid or Bitwig Studio in general, if you analyze a signal like we did here uh, with the zero crossings, there's no way of persisting this data in any shape or form. You can't save it into a recorder or you can't save it into the sampler. You can't save it in the array. Every time you reload the project, this pitch stop then is gone, right? Because you, maybe you want to just save this here or record this into a kind of module like here, the segments, right? So you want to replicate what you see in here. You want to replicate in here, but there's no way of doing this. Um, I did feature requests for this like years ago, um, but I, I, I don't know. It's probably not that important for most for most people. But I wish we had some kind of way of persisting data um, that are, that is created inside of the grid that you can persist with the patch or with the project. It would be really nice. Um, Okay, so this is one way of doing this. We can then here, like I said, mix in here the top end or the noise part, which is the whole kick drum. Or we can put this kick generator here in the fundamental. Uh, oh, that's, that's completely wrong. Put this here in the fundamental box, right? And then we can bring back the harmonics or the noise. I think this is better. And then we could maybe slow mode better. Yeah, maybe um, smooth out here the signal with the low pass. Something like this. Yeah, let's go see. So you don't have not too much parameter jumps in here. But you can hear it works fairly well. Oh, is there a pitch in there? Oh yeah, there's a pitch drop in here. Let's use a different sample here. Mm. Let's do something like this. Mm. Pitch, key tracking off. So the low end is completely replicated or resynthesized here with this FX grid just by using the zero crossings module. And it would be so great if you got if you could just persist this in some kind of module. Um, something like your scroll, where you can only draw stuff in, right? It would be nice if you could just record this into a scroll and then save it with the with the preset it would be so nice, but it's it's not possible. I really like to do this kind of stuff here. Um, it's probably not something you want to do live because we have here a lot of latency. Um, 85 BPM because of the harmonic split device here. Um, you can also try and use here the 
trans, uh, transient split device and put this device here on the tones. All right, this should kind of work too. Not really. <laughs> yeah, because there's also the hi-hat in there, the noise on top. So it's probably better on the harmonic split device. Um, so yeah, so this is how I would do it inside of the grid here with some FFT splitting. Uh, there are probably a lot of more ideas you could try. Um, something like um, using the sample here and feed it into the face modulation uh, input. Uh, yeah, just to do FM basically with the original signal and the sine oscillator. This works too sometimes. So there are so many ways of doing this and it leads always to different results and it's always fun and it also always gives you something. Okay, that's it for this video, I think. Uh, leave a like, leave a subscription. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.